Hello and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. I'm Hannah and I'm so glad you're listening today. If you subscribe to the Becoming Who You Are podcast before this episode was released, you might have noticed a significant gap between the last episode and this one. I haven't recorded a new podcast recently for a number of reasons to do with things going on at work, things going on in my personal life and trying to juggle too many balls at one time. Something had to give, and one of those things was this podcast. There were a couple of things going on there, so I thought it might be interesting in this episode to share what happened for me and what I've learned from it, and I hope that it's useful for you too. So I started the podcast in February and posted weekly for several weeks after that. If you've ever recorded a podcast, you'll probably know that it's quite time intensive, especially so for me since I'm still new to public speaking, so I like to type out and prepare each episode in advance. I hope to reach a stage where I can wing it soon, but I'm not quite there yet, as you can probably tell. I should also mention here that this project seriously challenges some beliefs and assumptions I had about myself that I've only really become fully conscious of since starting. These include that I'm not a quote, good public speaker, um, and I would say now that I just haven't had that much experience, and that I'm much better at communicating through writing than I am verbally. Again, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy, because the more I believe this, the more likely I am to communicate through writing, not speaking, and therefore lose out on valuable opportunities to gain experience and more confidence. I also have some verbal tics when I talk naturally that I'm not super happy about, including the common habit of adding superfluous likes and you knows into sentence like, you know, how I just did there. I've also picked up the habit more recently of finishing the sentence than leaving a, so, yeah, trailing off at the end. And I find this habit really frustrating. I don't know why I do it. But like with the two beliefs I've already talked about, these are all things that I can learn to feel happier about with experience. So doing a podcast was venturing into new and unknown territory for me. And by the time I published the last episode, I still wasn't totally in the swing of things, which is why when my test listener gave me some feedback about splitting an episode I'd recorded into two separate podcasts and redoing the whole thing again, I felt a lot of resistance. I'd already spent a few hours recording that episode and editing it, etc. And I knew the feedback was absolutely valid and that acting on the suggestion would improve the quality of that episode tenfold. However, part of me really didn't want to do it. So this made me think a lot about that part. And I realized that we all have parts of us that will look for the first opportunity out of an uncomfortable situation. And for that part of me, this was the perfect out. These parts aren't bad parts. They're trying to help us out in their own way and protect us from difficult feelings, which means they can provide some pretty compelling reasons why, even when I'd set myself a goal of releasing a podcast per week, I should absolutely not rework the episode I recorded and just leave it for now. That part of me came up with pretty much every excuse I could muster. I was too busy. I needed to focus on more on paid work and prioritize that. Uh, I couldn't ask to borrow the microphone that day. Yes, really, that was an excuse that this part of me used. Um, and I was facing some personal challenges at the time. So this voice piped up saying, who was I to start talking about these topics to other people and so on and so forth. Now, in the cold rational light of hindsight, I can work through every single one of these excuses. I could have totally found the time to rewrite and record those two episodes. It wouldn't have actually taken me that long. And I could have done it at the weekend when I wouldn't be working anyway. Um, And I could totally have just used the microphone and returned it afterwards, even if someone else was using it that day. Also, everybody faces personal challenges. It's part of being human. And on an intellectual level, I know this. At the time, however, the uncomfortable part of me pounced on these excuses like my cat pounces on his laser pointer. And that's exactly what happens when the discomfort takes charge. Excuses become loopholes and they become ways out. So one week went by and then two weeks and then three weeks. And if you've ever put something off, you might notice an interesting phenomena whereby the thing that you've put off weighs on your mind exponentially more the longer you leave it, while the resistance to doing it also increases. 
So you end up with, or what I ended up with anyway, was many thoughts about the podcast taking up headspace, but the immediate thought that I do it tomorrow or at the weekend or next week after X project was finished and so on. So if you've ever had a seriously overdue library book and you're like me anyway, you'll know what I mean. After a while, the amount of find you on the book becomes so embarrassing that it's much easier to avoid it and hide it away in your closet so you don't have to think about it anymore. But you do think about it, and the bigger the find gets, the more resistance you feel to returning it. <laughs> and I think there's some really interesting stuff involved in this pattern around uh, shame, fear of judgment, and parts of us that judge ourselves for breaking our own internal standards, i.e. In, in the library book incident that it's good to return library books on time, or in my example, that I should be releasing a podcast every week. So now I have my two barriers to entry. I have the discomfort that comes with doing something new and challenging, especially something that challenges assumptions that I had about myself. And in addition to that, I had this vicious cycle of thinking about the project because I haven't done it. Yet the more I thought about it, the more I felt resistance to it. So skip to two months later and still no podcast. In that time, I could have churned out eight to 10 more episodes and I would be at nearly 20 by now and would have been showing up consistently every week and everything good that goes with that. These factors were a source of some self-criticism in the beginning, which in itself is pretty demotivating. And I think the real turning point came when I stopped doing that. I stopped telling myself what I should do, I stopped nagging myself, and I stopped feeling this sense of burden every time I thought about the podcast, because after all, this is something that I'm choosing to do. It's something that, you know, deep down, although I feel quite uncomfortable about it, I do enjoy it. It's something that I feel pushes me in a good way. So looking back on this period now, I noticed two things. How recognizing the spiraling pattern of discomfort, avoidance and resistance can be broken with awareness. And how when I stopped criticizing myself and started trusting myself and trusting that if I felt a lot of resistance to recording a podcast that week, that's okay. That's there for a reason. And once I started thinking like this and started building some of that self-trust again, instead of saying, you know, to myself, why aren't you doing this? I felt a lot better about podcasting again. This wasn't a cut and dry process. There was quite a lot of unconscious stuff going on that's going to be useful to process for the future. What really stood out to me, however, is that I never had the thought, I don't want to podcast anymore. Stopping completely was never an option, because as much as it provokes discomfort, there's part of me that does enjoy it, and hopes that some of the ideas I talk about here will be helpful to other people, and is curious. I'm curious about what the future might hold as the feed grows. So, next time you're in a situation where you feel a lot of resistance, try to find the empathy point. What can you really understand and get behind that's provoking this resistance? If you think hard, more often than not, you'll find the resistance part is trying to protect you from something. The speed at which you do something and the frequency with which you do it don't matter. Those things will come in time, but they're not the most important elements right now. What's most important when we feel resistance is that we take on life with empathy for ourselves and our experience. When we can empathize with ourselves, we start to trust that we're doing what's right for ourselves. And when we can do that, things start to shift and we can move forward knowing that we're on our own side. So that's it for today. I hope it was helpful for me to share my experience with this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. For more on authentic living and what you can do to live the life you truly want, visit www.becomingwhoyouare.net and check out the blog, tools and resources. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon.